So hello all, it's your friend Anne here, and I'm here with my sweet friend Mandy from Texas. And hello. the channel is super channel for caffeine addicts specially, but all the other addicts are, are also warmly welcome here. And we are sharing a lot of info about our own recovery journey after caffeinism and also sharing info about post-acute withdrawals and all the other interesting info that we have been learning in our own recovery journeys. Yes, our own experience. Yeah, so we, we had just made a video today and we're making this one. And this is a, a new way we're doing it instead of being live. So I think this is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. And and yeah, this is all about people wanting to get sober if they haven't yet. Um, what it's like to quit and then start having really high anxiety, the post-acute withdrawal. And then how long of a journey it can be for some of us. But then also once we get to a certain place, you know, we're, especially for someone like us who had been heavy addicts for years and decades, right? For us, Over you know, 30, 30 years. years. Yeah. Yeah. 35, 40 people beyond. So just something interesting that this, this might not be super interesting for somebody that's like <clears throat> in the first year or two of post-acute withdrawal and having all the symptoms. But I just think that this type of information is really important to just talk about because once you get to three, four years, you're really starting to become more functional again. You're out and about in the, in the real world. again, <laughs> And, you know, it's very, it's super neat because I catch myself still. I'm out and about, I'm out and about, like I do it every time I'm out and about, I'm, I'm very like, if I'm driving and I'm going to school or I'm going to internship or I'm going to the beach, like I did yesterday, which is, I want to tell a little story about that today, but, um, just wherever I am out and about, I pinch myself. It's almost like pinching myself. I just am so grateful. So thankful to be functional again. Yeah. And I was functional in addiction. So that might not be saying much to some people, but it's a different type of functional, even though I know I'm still in the in part, I know I'm still in the part of the recovery process, but it is, I know that might sound weird to some people, but I just know it's going to get better than this. And that's everything, especially if you've had unknown symptoms, not or symptoms that you didn't know why you had them for 30, 35, 40 years. And you just thought that that was you. You just thought that yeah. was a normal way of life. The card you were dealt, and it wasn't, it was, it was the addiction. It was the way that the brain was rewired to function in that addiction, addictive state, which we talk about. We have a whole video about allostasis and homeostasis, but yeah. And again, you know, we, we have become brain scientists and expert brain experts and Please. neurotransmitter <laughs> hormone experts throughout this journey, which I do know because I've been told, but I do know that like when we are completely recovered, we're not going to care about that kind of stuff anymore, but it's interesting. It's interesting stuff to learn all that and talk about that while you're recovering, I guess for some, if that's what you're interested in. Yeah. When you, you same... go through something like this and your brain is rewiring, it's, it's like natural to get info and we have been yeah. getting a lot of that. So now we are just sharing uh, that for you because we become, we become some point in the pl place that we are not going to probably have time to do these videos so much anymore but but yeah. every now and then I think maybe once in a year when the time go by we sometimes we want to catch up and still continue to do this sure videos. yeah pop up give a little update on what's happening in life um how much work I'll be doing and money because I'm very I, I, everyone's different on what they want to do when they get out, but I, I have this passion of wanting to have my own business, you mm -hmm. know, wanting to open a recovery center or women's center for health, hormone health is something I just, just deep down have this passion to do something like that. And that it feels so nice to have that purpose, to care about that. And, and, and it might be something different It might, but it's just, I have this vision and I just, I, I have that, <clears throat> that want that that motivation to do something and that that just feels so good and so yeah so like here I am at 
two months away from th- from four years. And I do, I pinch myself. I do. I still do that. But that, but again, I know that even one day I won't be out and about. I think I'll always be grateful. And I think I'll always have a perspective of gratitude and just the sun comes up different for me. The birds sound different now. Like I think I'll always have that, but I don't think I'll, I don't think I'll constantly be pinching myself. Is this real? Am I really better? You know? And and then here's something interesting too. That's really, really weird. Cause I have heard that people start saying that they forget the the beginning. They forget the symptoms. They forget how awful it was. Yeah. And I'm starting, I don't know if I do that. I mean, I, I do that in this weird way of like, was it really as bad as yeah. I was saying? Like, yeah, you did I not, <laughs> your question, like, did I just not push myself hard enough? You know? And it's like, no, no, it was bad. <laughs> yeah, it was really bad, but we, we do forget actually <laughs> with time. We do, we do. Cause that's how we're designed, you know? And especially when we're drug-free or I like to say just all mind altering substances Mm -hmm. and our, that chemical cocktail is in perfect sync and we're just working properly that that's how we're designed. We are, this is, that's what's so interesting. Like when we're, when we're working the way we're supposed, the way we were designed to work and we're just living our life, you're not constantly going, Oh, I feel good. I feel good because that's how we're supposed to be. Yes. But that's why when we're, when we're, in the recovery process and we're rewiring that's why we're constantly questioning ourselves saying we don't feel good we feel off because that's not how we're supposed to be yeah and that's like even when you do like feel better and better in this journey but if you still have like some type of intrusive thoughts for example like if you are still maybe ruminating some not not necessarily hurting thoughts or anything like bad thoughts but it can be just still a little bit anxiety like coming up to the center not up to the roof but up to the room like in that way that maybe you are just ruminating some things that are happening in your life or maybe you are just ruminating that if you are in school or working that's something a little bit about there so that can be a form of intrusive thoughts that are still like coming out that is still rewiring and recovering but with time that will too go away so just want to let you know that um, some people doesn't probably pay attention of that even if you like mm-hmm. you are just busy and living but us we we just know that because it's always have been better and better and better we just know that what we are still probably processing out even it's not difficult anymore like it was like it's it's not like we are suffering or anything it's just like something kinks here and there like something. yes I love that because it is like little kinks and it is not suffering or struggling, but it's annoying. I like to use the word annoying yeah. can be, mm-hmm. but it's okay. And that's how I, 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 I think it's just so interesting and I'm glad you brought it up because in addiction, and, and we've talked about this in other videos, the mild, the moderate, the extreme and the panic level of anxiety, how we did live in addiction and some mild, moderate level yeah. of anxiety. So we did have those more mild intrusive thoughts they were forms of intrusive thoughts yeah some were scary and sometimes we had more moderate mm-hmm. and those got, thoughts got scary but yeah even the ones of like that worry I think when we're when we worry or we're concerned about what other people think of us and we're like in someone else's head thinking what they're thinking of us when they're probably even not that kind of like little paranoia worry like that uh social anxiety like yeah that kind of stuff is a form of a mild or moderate somewhere in the middle form of anxiety of an intrusive thought and we would have never known that if we hadn't been through what we're but it is it really is and that and when the when the anxiety subsides because yes we always have anxiety built in us for survival but yep this type of living in that chronic state of mild moderate that just means you're living in a higher stress state and so your brain is having these it's scanning the room, you know, it's yeah. always like, that's what I do. I see myself at school, scanning the room, looking at other people. And I'm like, why am I like nosy? Do I just want to see people's, am I just looking at what they wear? Look, it's like, no, it's, it's part of that survival instinct to like scan the room for survival. It's, and I don't know logically that it's happening. I just know it's happening, but I don't know why, but then I start to really think about it. And it's like, it's all about survival and wanting to be safe. 
yeah your nervous system is still a kind of rewiring and and that's why it has been so hard and it's it's for some of us who do fall off the mountain with this drug because we were in that allostasis days so long that's how we did learn to function even with addiction but now we don't have any of those like patterns or what we do did before with addiction so we are completely raw without any mind altering substance the substance so our brain is now figuring it all out all even those parts of the brain that we we didn't grow maybe fully when we were kids are every everything is now processing out it's really yeah. huge or really cool maybe some people are like yeah Anni, but maybe this is just like the life is and this is just life stressors happens but we are not talking about that now yeah we are yeah because that when that goes away like you get stressed and then the body goes back to homeostasis really quick so you get stressed you know that that does happen that's why it's built in us to have the fight or flight for it to go high something stresses us mm -hmm. but it goes back down but when we're on drugs our whole life we're on caffeine our whole life our stress is already up there yeah it never goes down and so if you if you were a person like us that was on caffeine and had the mild moderate and had intrusive thought, you know, light intrusive thoughts, had anxiety, mild, moderate anxiety on the drug and had these symptoms, that's because you're constantly putting the drug in the body and it was constantly raising the cortisol and adrenaline, mm -hmm. keeping you in that mild fight or flight state, constantly on aware and alert. Mm -hmm. And then we adapted to just think that that was yeah. normal. Yeah. Very cool. And then we also have this uh, called vagal brave a uh, break that when we are in normal state, our nervous system can sense what is the real danger and what is the fake danger. So mm -hmm. let's say when we heal that now, like my vagal break starts to function again. So if there is some voices or whatever happens, my nervous system knows, oh, this is not the real danger and I can calm down easily. But when we are in recovery and if especially if you have high anxiety, like even the we can have like the mild and modern and extreme and panic. So if you have or extreme and panic, it can be that your vag vagal break is completely out of the whack. So that's why the people like us and many other who are in recovery, they can stand the dog barking. They can stand when the children are um, like crying because you, uh. your vagal break doesn't work. Anything is a threat. You cannot watch even the scary movies or maybe... I don't say that you should watch scary movies, but now I can watch very exciting movies and not be out of the whack. But but in my recovery, and this is just my experience, I my vagal break, like my brain didn't sense what is the real danger. And that's why I was all the time like hyper, hyper aware. Yeah. And, and that's about the nervous system, like just doing the thing, <laughs> trying, to, mm -hmm. trying to figure it out huge and that's why in the beginning when we quit and we get panic anxiety we don't leave the house because we can't even be mm -hmm. threatened by anything <laughs> you know we're just like soup that is all about keeping us safe it's like we got to stay home it's like our brain just knows like we got to stay home well it thinks it knows that. i mean but there is no danger but it thinks that there is so we don't leave the house and that's why we don't leave the house but now i'm going to school i don't have the high anxiety anymore but I'm still scanning the room. I'm still checking for that danger, yeah. even though I don't feel the way I felt three years ago. And yeah, so like in addiction, even when I was in mild, had mild to moderate anxiety, I, um, I would get scared. Like if somebody came up behind me yeah. and scared me, oh man, I had that. And I thought it yes. was funny. Like I thought it was, yes. it was all, but once you heal from anxiety, someone come up behind you and you're just like, Hey dude, what's up? Like you're yes. just like, yeah, you're not. Oh. Okay. Is it my voice? Okay. No, I can okay. So yeah, this does sometimes that my voice disappears. So some people <laughs> call it like chumpy that they, yes. they will just say that I'm so chumpy and that how we were also but it's it's like it makes sense that nervous system like this is also so cool because this is the power that our nervous system has it's so huge that it can do all these symptoms that we have just to keep us safe so think about yeah. we should never underestimate our nervous system it's actually even we see it like this is all suffering it's hell and stuff but but our nervous system it's like they're just keeping our safe that's, yeah and and that's the evolution of humans
That's beautiful. That's a really beautiful way to look at it. Yeah. It's like, it's, yeah, the symptoms aren't fun, but wow, it's about survival. Like how cool is that? So that that's a really neat way to look at it. And um, yeah. Yeah, everything is processing out, and and like we always said, this is not a sprint; it's a marathon. In in and it mm. looks a little bit different in in because of course we have our different patterns in addiction. Like you showed me that really good example about this paper that you you put mm -hmm. the paper like that, and when the post we post the good withdrawals are over, you still have some wrinkles in the paper that you will solve with time that you did learn in addiction. So I think yeah. Yes, Mandy and the paper. So you can explain it maybe better because it's, it's your thing. And I showed this to my sister the other day when we had a little chat. She lives in France and we had a chat online and I showed her this and, you know, I was like, this is addiction. And then when we come out, it takes a year. It can take years to unravel those behaviors because when we're in addiction, we start to have a certain type of behavior or, or even, in, even just in childhood, you know, yeah learning how to, it's all about, that's why I never am hard on myself about my addictions because they were just there to keep me safe. It's all about yes. the survival. Yes. And the same with like childhood traumas and the way we were raised and mm -hmm. some people become a people pleaser. And I, I watched this really cool video. Well, it was like a little short. And the, the lady said, you're not a people pleaser. You're a parent pleaser. And then you become, and I think that when we start having addictions, because as we grow up, we're supposed to, you know, we're supposed to kind of get rid of those behaviors. But if you become addicted to substances to kind of mask all those traumas, let's say that when you were little or the way that you change, like, like for me, I was very outspoken, bratty. I was called a brat just because I was outspoken. But yeah. I was shushed. I was told to like, don't be yourself basically. And so as time went on, I just stopped being more and more and more myself And because I wasn't being my authentic self. And yes, I was on the caffeine, which I didn't know was causing me issues, but I did start drinking. So all of those substances cause you to keep those behaviors stuck or, or, or implement those behaviors like and they're not really you. They're just a behavior that you learned along the way. Yeah. So all in addiction for 30 years, you've got all these behaviors and these patterns, and then you quit the addiction and it's just like, like you can't help yourself because you're not suppressing those emotions anymore. Your authentic self just starts to shine through. And when you're in the beginning of this, when you quit the drug, so you have to go through the post-acute withdrawal symptoms and then after a certain amount of time or somewhere around two and a half, three and a half years, the behaviors start to unravel. And that's a lot of processing. And so you're more functional, but you've got all this going on. So yeah, that is, it's yeah. a lot. It's a lot to think about, but it's really what's happening. It's what we're experiencing. Yeah. And if you are in your twenties, maybe, or, or younger, then of course it can be that the paper will be clean like a lot of sooner. Yeah. Like you don't have maybe those patterns, like somebody who have been in the drug over for your um, 60 years for example it's it's that process can be a little bit different because our bra brain like to do the same stuff our brain like to be in the that like familiar state even that state wouldn't be the optimal let's say the you know the stockholm syndrome uh, when the trauma happens mm -hmm. our the brain brain still like kind of it adapts in that survival state. And that's why when we uh, change the state, like in addiction recovery, we change the state that we, how our brain was, and that, that is the rewiring and that is mm -hmm. the nervous system also adapting. So that mm -hmm. is the, when the pain comes, but it doesn't mean that that will last. It is just yeah. neuroplasticity <laughs> is the word it happens. Yes. Yeah. And let's say that somebody was never on any substance, no caffeine, didn't start smoking, never went to alcohol. They So they went through adolescence. They had a parent that shushed them or told them no, or they had really bad, you know, I'm not trying to compare the traumas, but had a more extreme trauma. Um, but all, you know, trauma is trauma to the body, to the mm -hmm. nervous system. Yeah. 
And, and there's a really good book, The Body Keeps the Score. I haven't read it, but I want to, I want to buy it. But I've watched yeah. videos about the, the man who wrote it. It's, it's really cool. Yeah, but but let's just say. Hmm? Peter Levine. I, yes, thank you. Yeah. Let's just say that somebody was never on any drugs. And you know how the brain takes 25, maybe I was reading maybe even 30 years to, to fully develop. Mm -hmm. So you have a parent, you become kind of a people pleaser. So like I was saying, I don't, I'm not hard on myself about the addictions because it was about survival, but I'm not hard on myself about becoming a people pleaser because that was a way to survive, to get love. It's like, if I act really nice and sweet, I'll get love. I'll get fed. I'll make sure I survive. <laughs> like I'll have yeah. all these, you know, or, and then that's what it's all about when we're little, but then we start growing up. We become 16, we become 20, we become 25. And let's say someone's never been on any mind altering substances. When you get to that age and your, your brain is mature, you start to naturally unravel those behaviors about the people pleaser stuff and the parent pleaser stuff, because you're, you understand that you don't need that behavior anymore, but, yeah. and I know I can't, I'm kind of repeating myself or like, but if somebody's on the caffeine at a young age, and then they go to other substances, that natural process will kind of stay stuck in the body. Mm -hmm. Someone like me, that's why I was 41, still having those same parent pleaser, people pleaser behaviors because I was on the drugs. And that's my theory. I really do think that if I never would have been on anything, because it's happening now, I'm off the drugs yeah. now and yeah. I'm putting my foot down with my mom, yeah. you know, love my mom. But now, so in the last six months, because in the, in the beginning of all this, when I went through post-acute withdrawal and had all that experience, I didn't have the capacity to, to worry about the rewiring in this way. Mm -hmm. My brain was doing that deep rewiring. Then I get to this point and I have the capacity to focus on life stuff. And so probably like the last six months, this is the third time my mom and I have gone a week or two without talking. So we're about a week right now because I'm putting my foot down about stuff that I think is important. And I'm naturally becoming mature at 45 years old now, which would have naturally happened at 2025. 20, yes. Yeah. So those be the, I'm breaking the, that pattern. I'm breaking those behaviors naturally because I'm off of drugs. Like, so, so of course it would have happened if I wanted to have been on them in the first place, I naturally just would have been like, whoa, this isn't right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. it makes so much sense. It happens so much sense. And that's why sometimes I feel like I'm experiencing some stuff that I did experience in my 20s. Like some things are now processing out. Like uh, even I'm like 40, 41 soon, but like still my brain is not in some some ways in there yet in some part of my brain still they still are doing some of the processes still now yeah. and and this is the cool and it, it is the true like the but we know already the trauma can like restore in body and it's it's possible like after 50 years you can restore the old trauma you can process the old trauma even 50 years old trauma and move on so this is the same with the, this addiction process it is possible to so-called like rewire your brain after years of addiction and it's pretty cool so cool so <laughs> cool yeah so if even if we were on the drug like what we were and people are then you quit then you do have that yeah that neuroplasticity it's naturally going to happen when we quit it just takes a minute for some people <laughs> You yeah, some people minutes. it takes a minute. And then you all who you are watching this and you are like, I didn't have the withdrawal symptoms and and like yeah, that can too be normal. Like not not everyone's brain are affected in the same way. And like we know some people do fall off the mountain with other sub substances too. Like with weed, this can happen. This can happen to mm. porn with some people. Um mm. maybe some people they fall off the mountain with alcohol or yes. like with other drugs but but we know that this also happens a lot of people with caffeine of course benzos like we see people yes. using benzos it's like hell of a journey but but what we do yeah. really want to bring this information more about caffeine and and it, it's very underestimated drug in yeah. this, this field exactly. <laughs> exactly it's an important one because it is so underestimated and so many people are on it just thinking everyone knows alcohol is not so great for you but people just 
so many people are consuming their caffeine and just not knowing. So yeah. Maybe we important. will, after our work, there will be in those coffee packets, there will be the warnings, like this is what caffeine can cause. And there is like high anxiety, irritability, like uh, heart issues, whatever, like that's, that should be the case. Like you, when you buy cigarettes, you can see those pictures about how it causes cancer and like stuff. But where are those warnings in the coffee packet? Coffee packet? Well, Okay. So I'm glad you brought that up because I did want to talk about this lady I met yesterday. So I, so here yeah. in Texas, it was a really beautiful day, low humidity. Cause we have really high humidity. It was low humidity, sunny. We don't, we only, it's like California weather. Like, um, they call it, uh, what is it? Um, San Diego weather. I like to say, yeah. so I'm like, I'm going to go to the beach. Cause I, I didn't have a lot of schoolwork to do. So I just, I didn't know if I was going to spend the night, which I didn't but I just packed some food and I just went down and well, I packed some, some snacks, not food. So, so, so I went to a restaurant, which again, pinching myself, the fact that I can like walk into a restaurant and I'm feeling more and more confident. Cause I used to walk into a place like that social anxiety and I'd kind of be insecure a mm-hmm. little bit still, but not social anxiety, but just a little bit of like, are people looking at me because I look at people and that's mm-hmm. part of my behavior for 30 years. I'm, I am a scan in the room. So if I'm scanning the room, then I think people are doing that to me, I think. And I think that's just a behavior that will go away. Like we said, yeah. but anyway, I walk it, but it's very, very small amount of that, that worry or whatever concern. I walk, it's just me. So I go to the bar. I don't want to sit at a table. It's packed. It's like, again, you know, there's, it's, it's an outside restaurant bar and I just sit at the bar and I order a water and the water tastes kind of like, maybe it had some like lemonade taste to it. Cause sometimes here, like if the water gun is connected close to like the other, I don't. So I said, may I have, may I just have a, um, a bottle of water? Yeah. She's like, sure. And then I check the label because sometimes, you know, I don't know. Yeah. It could have caffeine in it. Yeah. I'm not careful. I really am. I don't think it's paranoia. I think I just, it's wise. It's wise. Yeah. And it did have some minerals in it. It did have, it was loaded with not loaded, but it did have some added um, minerals, but you know, I'm, I, that's okay. So, and it was a big water. I was very happy. And then I get some wings and I'm just sitting there looking and this lady sits down next to me and she got the happy hour menu. And I was like, oh, I didn't know it was happy hour. So like a food menu, because even there's happy hour drinks, but there's happy hour food. Yeah. So she's like, yeah. So the bartender gives me the, uh, and I can sit at the bar, you know, even though I'm sober, it does not bother me. Everyone around me is drinking, does yeah. not bother me because I know what it does to the bright. Like I know too much now. Yeah. I don't crave it. I don't feel like I'm missing out. Because I actually feel so much more happiness and joy than what I did when I was drinking. Because when I was drinking, I it's like I was finding my happiness at the end of the bottle. Like every time I would drink, I thought that that was going to change me and make me feel the way I'm feeling now. Yeah, I was always looking for that that happiness, that joy in the beer. Yeah. Um, but then the caffeine was causing me the anxiety. I was going to the alcohol to medicate. Anyway, so yeah, I can just sit there. And enjoy myself, look out at the water. Again, the sun shining. I'm just, I just feel so good. So she sits down and we start talking after the menu thing. And she orders a glass of wine. And she said that she just got off work. She was, she was down there for a convention because she lives up here in Houston too. And she, um, she was just talking a little, you know, she was sober at that time. She had four glasses of wine as because we talked for like three hours, but I could tell by like her fourth glass, it really hit her. But anyway, that's, you know, she's doesn't have a problem. She said, anyway, (laughs) that's not here here or there, but um, I I enjoy talking to her, even though it's funny because I don't mind being around people that are drinking, but then the the energy changes, you know, she kept like looking at me kind of like staring, almost maybe a little uncomfortable at the end only because it's like, I could just see how different she was, you know? Yes. But that's not my point, but it's, mm-hmm. it's just interesting though. But, um, so we start talking and I was telling her kind of like what I'd been through. And, and again, I am just feeling so good because even a year ago, if I was talking to somebody like that, yes, I was maybe out and about before my tsunami wave, but I still kind of had some stuff in the back of my mind. Like, am I going to have a panic attack or, 
And I was just feeling really, really good talking to her. And I was very excited about that. Again, kind of pinching myself. But then I then I started noticing I was getting a little tired. So mm-hmm. that is still an indication to me, like, yes, Mandy, don't get too excited. Like you are doing so much better, but you are still recovering. That's how I know I'm still recovering because I do get a little tired. And then on the and then I drove home and I was yawning. But I know that's normal. And I know that'll get better. So as we're talking, you know, I'm telling her my story. And she goes, you know what? She said, I was drinking a lot. She's like, I'm not a coffee drinker. I never drank soda. She's like, but I've always had migraines and I started drinking a lot of green tea. Well, we didn't even start talking about the migraines until later. And I know the time is counting yeah, down now. Yeah. Um, so we started talking about the migraines later, which was very interesting about childhood trauma being trapped in the body and migraines. But that, cause, cause I was like, you were never on like chocolate. She's like, I don't like it. It's like, you never drank Cokes as a kid. She's like, no, my mom didn't let us have Cokes in the house. And so I was just like, Hmm. And then I asked her, I said, did you ever have any childhood trauma? And she said, yeah, she had had something happen to her when she was younger. And I was like, and I had watched videos that like when things are stuck in the body, something in the body keeps the score, it can cause migraines. Anyway, she would drink the green tea because she liked the bitter taste and she would put like three or four bags in water, like in a big thing and like sip it all day. Yeah. But she said that it helped her with her migraines. She did notice it helped the migraines. And I was like, yeah, because caffeine is caffeine. First of all, yeah. the, that healthy green tea. She's like, yeah, I saw the green tea was like healthy. And I'm like, mm-hmm, a lot of people do because they have yeah. the antioxidants and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And I said, but it restricts blood flow, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And she was like, really? And she goes, well, anyway, she's like, I was just drinking that all the time every day. And she's like, I started having like issues with my heart, like heart palpitations. So she went to the doctor, they did all these scans And so, you know, we all kind of feel like we get gaslit by doctors going through this process, but she, there are some good doctors out there because she went to the doctor and he messaged her back and said, oh, there's this article. And I asked her to send me this article, but she said, there's this article. He said that, um, in the military, like back in the day, they did, they did some type of research that the guys in the military were drinking green tea and started having these heart palpitations. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I don't know if they're drinking green tea in the military. That's weird. But like, yeah, I know that they're on a lot of coffee and like energy drinks Yes, and, and, and have been for years. I mean, my dad, even in the sixties when he was in the army, it's like, all they drank was coffee. Right. Yeah. That was way before energy drinks. So, and a little side note, my father-in-law, who's a pilot, they used to give them a stimulant kind of like an, an Adderall or a Ritalin to help them fly wow. to be, to be focused. Right so silly so to be focused um so it's just that they're on a stimulant so so, uh, anyway (laughs) so she's talking to me she's like so after the doctor told me that she's like I cut out the green tea she's like every now and then I'll have it like every other month or something because she's like I really love the taste and I'm like (laughs) yeah your brain likes the 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 addiction but she's like it's only every other month but then you can't trust what people are saying she might have it every other day who knows but it scared her enough for her to cut it out, but she was just like putting it all together, like with what I was telling her. So I'm glad I shared what I, what I shared. She's like, I just didn't understand. She's like, it didn't make sense to me what he was telling me. She's like, but now that you're sharing what you're sharing about your whole journey with caffeine and alcohol and what I went through, what the doctor told me, she's like, it's starting to make a little bit more sense. She's like, it's still confusing to me. And I'm like, Oh, I get it. I get that. It's confusing. But then we're talking more. She tells me what she does. And she was saying, because I told her, I said, I have this dream. I said, children should not be on caffeine. Like there should yeah. be an age limit on it. She goes, yeah, you need to get with your, um, your, um, she said, it's all policy. So she works kind of in the area of like government and like policy. She's mm-hmm. like, but you have to get like with your district and your county. And she's like, you could, like you start small like that. Like you don't go to Congress like you start small. And, and I was just like, so when you said that my whole, I had to tell my whole story to get to like, I'm passionate about that. Like, I think, I think, why not, why not try to go to the, to the small district here in my area and just say, Hey, I want to change these policies. Like she said, first you have to start like in the schools. And I said, well, didn't when president Obama was president, didn't, um, 
his wife, Michelle Obama, she, she had a campaign to get the Coke machines out of schools. So like, yeah, that's huge. And I don't know if that's in every school, of course. And then in Caffeine Blues, he does talk about that, how, why Cokes were such a big part, you know, in the schools for kids for yeah. money and everything for athletic programs. Yes. But, um, I mean, it's getting kids addicted, yeah. which I don't know if they know that, but but anyway, she's like, so you start off with that. And I was like, yeah, but after school, kids can go to Starbucks now. They can go to the convenience store so they can get their Starbucks sweet drinks. They can go to the convenience store and get energy drinks. So there has to be some type of like 18 age limit, maybe on it. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, that would be so cool. <laughs> anyway, you will be doing the change in the world. Like no more but coffees or Cokes or like in the school. For kids, right? No. Because they yeah. do say. They yeah. say that like a 12 year, under 12 years of age, they shouldn't have any, I think is what the, oh. the FDA and then like 12 to 16, they shouldn't have more than like a hundred milligrams. They shouldn't have any, no, any, not any. Yeah. But they know, they know they're saying 12 and under because it's such a young development. Like, so why, why, if it's so bad, why 12 and under, they can't have any, but, and then like, why? 12 and 16 they can have a little bit it's just so they shouldn't have any and no one should have any no one should have and any. now the sun is really but yeah it's just I don't know I don't know if one day I'm gonna even that's gonna be my passion but um it's a drug and alcohol there's an age limit on alcohol and I just I'm really passionate thinking that there should be an age limit yeah on caffeine yes makes sense yeah. yeah it should and and when the time goes by i do believe that people will be more awake and they they start to wake more about this stuff too even probably they're not gonna be caffeine free world in our lifetime but but we are going forward and like yeah. more and more people also fall off the mountain with this drug yes. and because of there are no limitations energy drinks that kids are drinking those like a water like we were drinking coffee too and in my country everybody basically drinks everybody takes caffeine in some form or another yeah and that's what she was saying she was so confused about she's like but in china and japan J in japan they drink green tea and they're healthy and, da -da -da. and i was just like yeah but we don't know Like maybe th there are a lot of people there that are falling off the mountain and getting anxiety with yeah. it. And it just yeah. seems it's such a market that's like green tea so healthy and the antioxidants. It's such a scam. It's such a market yeah. scam. scam. And it happens yeah. to with tea too. Like that, that's the thing that yeah. I have to repeat all the time. Like the people, caffeine, it's not coffee. It that's that's the one still that people are not getting getting it right. But we have less than one minute left. Yes. Now. And I, and I told her about our friend in, in, um, India who just, who fell off the mountain with tea. Like I, I told her all of it. She's just like, wow. She's like, I never, I never put it together. And I, so it was really neat to share because sometimes I feel like I shouldn't share with so many people because they might think it's just weird, but I'm glad I did. And then she shared with me her story and it was just really neat and I felt good and it was nice. So, yeah, I don't know if you want to do another video or for, for another day, because now I'm all like jacked up and excited. <laughs> Yes, we but this was good anyway another video but this yes. video was here and thank you lot yep. for watching and see you guys see bye. ya bye bye <laughs>